Hey, I'm Ken. I'm the pastor here at FBC Lantana. And whether you join us for church online live with us this morning or whether you watch it on demand and watching this video later, I just want to say thank you for joining us and making us a part of your day. You know, and, and whether you're watching us live or on demand, I just want to say make sure this doesn't replace you being connected to a local church you know, where you can work on your relationship with Jesus and with others. And I know you may not live in our area, so you can't make us your church as much as we would love it. Uh, make sure you get connected to a local church somewhere. And I hope this sermon is a blessing to you and that it encourages you and strengthens your walk with Jesus. One thing I think we all realize is every one of us likes things that are new. Think about a new car. You get a new car, you really enjoy that new car, you really enjoy that new car smell for about a week or so, and then it kind of goes away. Or the kids start eating in it, and just different things happen. You spill your first cup of coffee in it, and it just isn't new anymore. But we enjoy things that are new, whether it's that new car, whether it's a new house. It could be a new job, a new season in our life. It could be a new baby, you know, whether it be your own child, whether it be a grandchild, there's something special about just seeing that little baby and that new birth inside life. And, and as a grandparent, as much as we enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing my own kids be born, man, seeing my grandkids, knowing that I'm going to get to spoil them and shake them up and send them home, <laughs> you know, let the parents take care of them. But we all like new things, whether it's a new job and and as we begin this new year, and as we're going into this new year, you know, we're looking at this new beginning, and it's a chance for us to kind of reset. You know, that's one good thing about New Year's is you get that chance. Put the past behind you and move forward. Get them new beginnings, a new year, and a new start. And instead of getting caught up in the past, and how many of you thinking about it right now, have already failed at a New Year's resolution you made. Okay, some don't participate. I got some raising their hands. You know, because most times New Year's resolution by the end of January, it's over. Because you've already failed at it, you already forgot it, you, you know, life's going on. But how about when you do a new beginning? You know, last week we talked about having this new heart. And as we start this new year, we get this new heart and, and we get our heart and, and we make sure that we're connected with Jesus. We make sure that our heart is listening, that is prioritized, and that we continue to move to get closer to him. And, and as we go through this series of all new beginnings, one of the things we're going to look at today is the opportunity to reset or to refocus our CPUs, our CPU our command central processing center in our life. We get to create a new mind. Create a new mind as we go forward, as we kind of reset. And even the Bible tells us in Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. Think about it. everything we do Everything we think about comes from our mind. We think about it before we do it. If we're trying to figure something out, we think about it and we kind of process it in our brains and then we move forward and we do it. So we need to be able to transform our minds to start looking differently at the world as we start and continue in this new year. You know, and I think it's when our mind um, is renewed and we can receive this clarity we can see better what God wants for us, what God wants for our life, and what he wants us to do for him going forward. You know, and today we're going to focus on a story that's in the Old Testament. Many of you probably know it. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. So if you have a Bible with you, I encourage you to open it up to Joshua chapter 1. If you don't have a Bible with you, there is one in the back of the pew uh, in front of you. Um, or as always, it'll be up here on the screen. And, and real quick, just for those of you who joined us for church online, uh, as I said earlier, we appreciate you being here. But I do want to let you know as we go into new beginnings and a new year, we do have a new online platform. 
So if you're currently watching on YouTube, I encourage you to go to fbclantana.com slash live. Um, there's a better chat on there. There's more people on there to be able to chat with. You also have a Bible available and the notes right there in that new platform. So if you're watching on YouTube or even if you're in the room and you sometimes watch on YouTube and you probably got it saved in your browser history, I'd encourage you to switch over to fbclantana.com slash live or just go to our website, fbclantana.com, and on the very front page, there is a button that says watch live. Click it, and it takes you right to it. So it's a whole lot easier. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dig into Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. It says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. Your territory will be from the wilderness of Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, in the land of the Hittites, and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers and give them as an inheritance. Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instructions my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Heavenly Father, as we dig into your word this morning, Lord, we ask that you open up our eyes to see what it is you want us to see. Open our ears that we may hear your voice and open our hearts to receive what it is you have for us. And Lord, may your name be glorified through it all as we make this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So we know Joshua served Moses and was next in line. And at this point, we see that Moses has died and it is now Joshua's time to lead. Joshua has a lot on his shoulders at this time. He, he's got a lot he's got to do. He's got to take these people and lead them into the promised land. And not only lead them into the promised land, but lead the Israeli army against warrior nations. You think about every city, every place they had to conquer going into the promised land, they had to fight for. It wasn't just laid out and given to them. They had to fight a battle every place that they went. And you may have noticed that God tells Joshua not to be afraid. And I think he tells them this because I'm pretty sure Joshua was, was a little bit afraid. I'm sure he had fear inside of him because think about it, he let, never ever led without Moses. Moses always was the leader. So now he's got to step up, he's got to lead. Not only does he have to lead, he, he's got to go ahead and conquer the promised land and he's got to establish this nation, establish the nation of Israel in it. And I think God knew exactly what he was doing when he's talking to Joshua at this time. Because what he does is he gives him words of encouragement. He gives him the words to be able to make him not afraid, to give him confidence and to move forward in his life. And I think that throughout this message today, I think one thing you're going to notice is that the power of God's spoken word over Joshua's life is the same power that can impact your life this year. These same exact words that he spoke to Joshua can impact us as we move forward. Think about the very first verse. Well, in verse 6, the New Living Translation actually says this, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors and give it to them. So I think the first word that we see is the word of purpose. 
The first word we see here is that word of purpose. God gave him that word of purpose. He literally tells him inside these verses, you are the one. He gives him the purpose. You are the one who are going to take these people into the promised land. You are going to lead my people, and I am going to give you all of this. So the first thing we see that God gives him that promise, where he gives him that word of purpose. And throughout the word of God, we see people given their purpose by God all the time. We see it throughout the scripture, throughout the word of God, people are given it. Think, think Noah and Moses. Noah and Moses were both called to be rescuers. David was called to be a king. Nehemiah was called to be a restorer. Jonah was called to be a preacher. And Paul was called to be an apostle. And you see it so much more and more throughout the scripture, what people are called for. And, and I think sometimes we can relate to people in the Bible ourselves. You know, maybe you can relate to being a rescuer like Noah and Moses. You know, if you're a first responder, if you're a nurse or you're a doctor, you're out there, you're rescuing people. You can relate to being a rescuer just like Noah and Moses. Or maybe you're a leader. You know, maybe you're just this born leader so you can recognize and see the leadership of the men and the women inside the Bible, and you can connect yourself with it because you also lead, lead in your home, lead God's people, lead wherever you're at. Well, maybe you're a preacher like one of the prophets, or you really enjoy, enjoy sharing God's word with other people, just like the prophets shared God's word. So maybe that's your gift, and that's where God's given you is to be that preacher, to teach people God's word, and to help guide their lives. But here, here's the point I, want, I think I really want you to come across today, that when we're in, in the word of God, when we're in the word of God, it has the power to speak to our purpose for our life. When you spend that time in God's word, it gives you that power and it can speak to the purpose in your life. And each one of us is given a purpose. Each one of us has a different purpose in life. And we're never really going to find out what our purpose is until we spend that time in God's word so we can hear what his purpose for us is. And then what we got to do is actually take that purpose and go with it and realize that purpose comes from God. It doesn't come from us. There are many things in life that we may want to do and we may struggle at it because it's not what God called us to do. We've got to go with the purpose that he has for our life. So if you're struggling trying to do something, say, well, I think this is what God's got me doing and it's a struggle. It's probably not your purpose. It's something that you're trying to do on your own. And when we do it on our own, we're generally going to fail. We may have some wins along the way, but that purpose has to come from God. And the way you're going to find that purpose is by spending that time in his word. And I think the second thing that we see is he gives Joshua a word of promise. He gives Joshua a word of promise. See, look what else God says to Joshua in verses 7 and 8. He says this, Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instructions my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. How many people enjoy reading books? How many people enjoy reading now, the written word can mean a lot. Think about what kind of books you like to read. It can be an instru inspirational. Wow. It could be inspirational. It could be a book on leadership. It could be instructional. It can be a personal. It can just be filled with information depending on what you want. It could be a really good drama. I know some people maybe like love stories. It could be a war story, a thriller, scary, or action but every one of them speak to us in one way or the other. We have the ability to, to read novels or read history books and gather so much information from it. But yet when you look into God's word, it gives us all of that. 
And, and as we look at all the different genres of books out there, I think if you really love, went back to the Bible, and if I had to say the Bible was about one word and one word only, I would say the Bible was about promise. It's about a promise because it's filled with promises. It is filled with promises for our lives. It's filled with promises for people's lives inside the Bible. And you even think about the Old and New Testament, as we call it, we're actually called the Old and New Covenant. And a covenant had to do with God will do this when you do this, or if you do this, then God will do this. So it's promises connected to it, and it requires something from both parties. It requires us to do something for God, and then God will do something for us, or vice versa. God will say, I will do this if you do this. And see, way too many times we see people take promises out of context, and, well, God's word says this, and they get into this whole name it, claim it kind of thing, but they never read the verses before or after. You know, there's always a covenant or a, a something, a, I want to say contract, but there's always a give and take. There's things that God's going to do in his promises, but it requires us to do things also. And, and I think as we look through this, we know God's been making promises since the beginning of time. He made a promise to Adam and Eve when sin came into this world. When they allowed sin to come into the world, God still made a promise with them and told them that Eve's offspring would end up stepping on or killing the head, stepping on the head, the seed, the seed of Eve would end up stepping on the head of the serpent and crushing the head of the serpent. So there was a promise in there, and, and that translation also we know is basically Jesus would come and take sin out of the world. Jesus would come and give us that chance to have sin and to change the world. Think about God promised Abraham that his descendants, he would have the descendants of a great nation. They'd outnumber the stars. But Abraham was old. His wife was old. And they didn't have kids. But we also know that that promise did come to fruition and that God did give that to Abraham. We saw God promise the Israelites the promised land. You will get this land. And that's exactly what we're reading today in Joshua is them going to take this land that God promised them. He's made promises to everyone in the world through his son Jesus in John 3.16, that whosoever would believe in him would have eternal life. The belief comes before the eternal life in heaven. So there's always something back and forth between it. And those aren't just promises of long ago. There's promises for us today. Think about Isaiah 40.29. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Isaiah 41.10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to you. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Deuteronomy 31, 8, one of my favorites, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Philippians 4, 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory of Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Those are just a few of the promises in God's word. Those are just a few of them. But understand, if you're not reading God's word, if you're not taking time in God's word, you're not going to know what those promises are. You're not going to understand those promises. And if you don't spend that time in God's word, people will take 
promises and twist them on you. They will take a verse and twist it and say, well, this is what God's word says, but it's not the full word of God. <clears throat> we need to take that time in it. And even think about what it says here today for Joshua. And Joshua is told that he will prosper and succeed in all that he does. But it's contingent on what? Him studying the book. The studying this book of instruction continually and meditating on it. So he is required to study the book. He's required to meditate on it day and night so that he would be sure to obey what's written in it. And what comes after that? He's able to prosper and succeed in all that he does. You see, when we hear what God, God promises us by being, in his word, by being in his word, we need to really start believing that. We need to spend time in it. First thing in the morning, take time in God's word. A lot of times, the only time anyone hears anything about God's word is Wednesday or Sunday because they don't spend that time in God's word each and every day. Let it guide and direct your day. Start out with it. Let it direct your day. Let it direct how you're going. Let it feed the soul. Let it feed your soul throughout the day. And as it's feeding your soul, just bring you to that point of wanting to worship. So you take that time worshiping God. Let it encourage you during challenging times. And understand that there is power in living what God's word says. There is power that comes from doing what his word says. But you've got to read it and meditate on it to know what it says. I think the third word that he gives is the word of presence. He gives that word of presence, and in Joshua 1, 9, it says, Haven't I commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua's tasked with the impossible. He's got to take this group of ragtag Israelites who have been wandering around in the desert for 40 years across the Jordan River, to fight battles and to get the land that God promised him. But God told him, I will be with you. That encouragement that comes from it, that word of God's presence in his life. God gives us that same word of presence in our life, that he will be with us, that he will not leave us, that he will not forsake us. You know, Joshua didn't want to go alone. I wouldn't have wanted to take that battle alone. And I think sometimes in our own life, we could be in this continual war in our own life and we're fighting these battles and we go through different things in our life. Do you really want to go through that alone? When you're struggling with an addiction, when you're having an argument with a spouse, when life just isn't going, your job isn't what you want it to be, do you want to go through that alone? It's a whole lot easier to go through that with God. Asking him to come into your life, asking him to be present with you in your battles. Because how do your battles work when you try and do it alone? How do addictions work when you try and get out of an addiction all by yourself? <clears throat> Having his presence with us makes it a little easier. Have him experience some hardships with you. Dig into his word to find out, Lord, what can I do? What is it that's missing? I always say the Bible is basic information before leaving earth. It is our instruction manual. And we don't take time to look at it. Like I said one time last year, it's like that instruction manual that we keep in the junk drawer. Don't keep it in your junk drawer. Take time with it each and every day and allow God to be a, bring, bring that presence into your life. Hebrews 13, 5 tells us, He will never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. See, there are many times when we may not know where God is. So a lot of times in your life, as you're going through life, you may feel like God's not there. I don't feel God's presence. Well, as much as you may not feel God's presence, God knows exactly where you are. God knows exactly where you are, exactly what you need, and when you need it. 
And generally when you don't feel his presence, it's because something you're doing. Let me say that again. When you don't feel his presence, it's something you're not doing. Because if, you're, if you don't feel his presence, and I've said it before, if you're having conflict here, it's because you're having conflict here. You're not having that relationship. If you get this relationship right with God, everything else becomes that much easier. If you're having issues in a marriage, start looking at where both of you are with your relationship with Jesus. And think of it like this big triangle. And the closer you get to Jesus, guess what? The closer you're going to get to each other. And it's like that through life. The closer you get to him, the more you're going to feel his presence. But for some of us, we'll just check it off. I went to church on Sunday. I went to Bible study on Wednesday. But then you take no time during the week to meditate on his word, to take time in his word, to get closer to him and have his presence in your life. It's a way to create that new mind. Create that new mind that you're looking for him in everything we do. Understand, this is the power of the word of God being in your life. He provides purpose, he provides a promise, and he provides his presence with us. In some practical application, well, that's really good, Pastor. Well, how do I do it? Pick up the Bible. Knock the dust off of it. If you don't have a Bible, see me, I'll get you one. Guess what? Everyone's got a smartphone. Most of us have a smartphone. You know where the app store is? Click on the app store and type in version. Type in Bible. You can get a Bible right on your phone, whether it's on your phone, whether it's, you, you know, for you Apple people, go to iTunes. For the rest of us saved people, we'll go to our Galaxy Samsung store. <laughs> Just go to the app store. Download the Version Bible app. They have all kinds. There's a button on there that says plans. Click on it. They've got plans for anything you can think of. You want to plan on marriage. You want to plan for young adults, kids, whatever it is. Hey, I want to learn about love. Whatever it is, they've got a plan out there for you. And then take the time each day to dig into it. If you're not already doing it, we've got the Journey Bible uh, study that we're doing here in the church. You can go right to our website and click right on it under events and sign up for that Journey Bible study and do the Journey Bible study. Think about reading your Bible like food. How many of you could go more than a day without food? Now, it's one thing if you have to, like you're in an accident someplace, but on a normal basis, how long would you generally go without food? Four or five hours? Exactly. How long will you go without reading God's word? Weeks? Months? Years? Think of it as that food for your soul. You wouldn't go more than five hours without eating. Why would you go more than five hours without digging into God's word? Why wouldn't you go more than five hours without having a conversation with him? He created you and he loves you, but yet we'll treat him like leftovers and put him back in the back of the refrigerator till it gets moldy. We've got to put it at the forefront of our life. And if you're not doing it, I encourage you this week, pick it up and say, you know what? It says if you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. Take the next 21 days and spend time in God's word every day. Pick up the Bible, download the app, whatever it is. Spend the next 21 days taking time each day in God's word. Take the next 21 days and spend time talking with him each and every day. And even if it's that 140 character text message prayer to him, he knows your heart. As you create this new heart and now we're creating this new mind as we move forward, it requires you to do something. It requires you to take a step. But with that step, we get God's promises. We get a purpose for our life. We get his presence in our life. 
So I want to encourage you, take that next step. Matthew 4, 4 says, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's what we should be feeding on each and every day. You know, and as we begin this, this new, new year or this fresh start, start with looking at the word of God and watch how it changes your life. Watch how it can really change your life. Don't just be checking off, I came to church. Don't be Christianese, you know, kind of doing the Christianese thing. Actually be a Christ follower. Do what his word calls us to do. And like I said at the beginning, when we're in the word of God, it has the power to speak to our purpose for our life. God's word can speak purpose into your life. And maybe you're sitting here saying, well, that's really good, Pastor, but I'm not sure what my purpose is. Well, the first purpose would be to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't done that and you're waiting to try and get it all together, and well, I don't know God's word and, and I don't spend time in it and I don't know what to do. Well, let me give you a little hint. God's word says we're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same boat. We all sin, we all fall short. None of us can walk on water. Although some think they walk on water, none of us can walk on water. We're all sinners and we all fall short. I'm included in that. But it also says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's when he starts to transform your life. That's when you're able to feel that presence. You can grab onto those promises and you can find that purpose that's in your life. And for some of us, maybe you've been walking with God for a while and, and you know, it's kind of turned cold. It's kind of just been going through the motions because you don't pick up his word and read it daily because you don't meditate on what his word says and you're just trying to do life on your own. You'll walk around telling someone I'm a Christian, they probably look and maybe some people in your life are questioning your Christianity. What kind of Christian are you? Are you truly doing what God's word calls us to do? Now, it doesn't mean we won't mess up. Words will come out of our mouth. Actions we may still do. but we can ask for that forgiveness and we can move forward. And maybe you just stop trying to ask for forgiveness and you're just going through the motions and, and you need to come up and say, God, renew my mind. Renew my mind so that I will seek you with my whole heart. So that after two weeks, you can have a new heart, you can have a new mind and you can start this new beginning with a fresh start in your life and start putting him first. I don't know what it is, but guess what? You do, and so does God. If you don't have a relationship with him, I encourage you during this final time, I'm gonna have some prayer partners up here. You can come up here and pray with them. If you need to accept Jesus, they'll be more than happy to walk you through the prayer of salvation. I'll be located in the back if you need to come back there and see me. And maybe you just need prayer. You just need someone to pray with you so that you can start feeling the presence of God again. They'll be up here ready to pray with you and for you. And if you don't want to pray with someone, you can go to the side of the altar and just kneel down and take that moment with God on your own. Asking him to renew your mind and renew your heart as we continue with this year. So I'm going to ask Ms. Valerie, Ms. Maureen, and Brother Scott to go ahead and come up front. And if you need to pray, they're going to be right up here for you. They'll be up here, answer questions, pray with you and for you. And if you can't make it up here and you're kind of where you're sitting and you need one of them, 
just raise your hand. They'll come to you and pray with you where you're at. And with that, let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We just thank you. We thank you for who you are and for your word. Lord, because of your word, if we take time in it and we meditate on it, we can know the purpose that you have for our life. Lord, we can read your promises and have your presence with us. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you, I'd ask that you make them make that move. That they'll come forward today and know that today is the day of salvation. And that they will accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. And Lord, for those who have been just going through the motions, I ask you to use the Holy Spirit and convict them, Lord. Convict them of just going through the motions and make them become new for you. Lord, you say when we accept you, we are a new creation. Lord, make us all new creations again today. And Lord, we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us here today at FBC Lantana for Church Online. And, and, and if, if you enjoyed what you saw today, I'd just like to ask you to go ahead, go to our website and, and help support this ministry as we try and outreach and reach the lost for Jesus Christ. And you can just go to our website, fbclantana.com slash give, um, and you can make an online donation right there. Again, I encourage you to get connected to a local church, and especially if during this message you felt compelled to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, definitely go tell somebody. Let someone know because that is the greatest decision you could ever make in your life. And, and from there, get connected to a local church. Hey, we would love to provide you with some resources with that. You can go to our website, fbclantana.com, and on the very front page, you say, give my life to Jesus. Click on there, and at the bottom of there, there's some links and some good information for you. And just wanted to say, welcome to the family.